Welcome to the ProAdvisor Marketing Podcast, where creatives and nerds collide. Designed for today's bookkeepers, accountants, and tax pros, we are dedicated to helping you learn how to market your firm as we discuss the latest marketing strategies that are working right now. Whether you're just starting your firm or looking to maximize your marketing efforts, this podcast is for you, packed with insights on how firms can grow their brand and online presence. This podcast is hosted by Kristen Corey, a marketing expert in the accounting space and founder of ProAdvisor Marketing, and Eric Caceres, who co-founded a successful CPA firm and now helps others build the firm of their dreams through his company, ProAdvisor Brands. Please welcome your hosts, Kristen and Eric. Welcome to episode 20 of the Pro Advisor Marketing Podcast. I'm Kristen Corey. And I'm Eric Caceres. And today we are discussing marketing ads. There are a lot of options out there when it comes to advertising your business. So we want to give you a rundown on some of the most popular options and how each one works. Picture this with me. You are searching for a service and after looking at many websites, reviews, and portfolios, you finally found one that fits all your needs. Then those three horrible words disrupts your productivity. Request a quote. Why? You are a busy accountant who does not have the time to schedule a meeting for something that may not be in your budget, which is why those of us at ProAdvisor Marketing created Express Content Creation Services. No consultation, no quoting, just select the content you would like to purchase answer a few questions online, and have it delivered to your inbox in three to seven business states. ProAdvisor Marketing. Let's build your story, tell your story, and sell your story. So I, like, pause for a second. Episode 20. I am a little astounded. (laughs) It feels like time is going by so quickly. Um, But, yeah, I mean, it's crazy to think we're already on episode 20. Yeah, it's fun. And that, that's yeah. kind of that, that part of, you know, just getting started and, you know, just go, right? Yeah. Don't necessarily yeah. need the 20 episodes planned out, which can be helpful and is probably good planning. But yeah. <laughs> sometimes you just need to start. And uh, and then when you're 20 episodes into it, you've got your rhythm and it's fun. Yeah. I mean, I, I've been doing blogging for so long. After a while, it's like, okay, another blog post. But this is kind of fun. It, I like the new medium of a... Uh, I don't know. It seems it definitely feels more personable, um, which is why we love it so much. But yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. So today we're talking marketing ads. This is something that we're constantly talking about with our clients. It's a great way to kind of give yourself a boost when it comes to trying to create a community around yourself um, or around your business. <clears throat> but one of the things that a lot of people assume with marketing ads is that it is going to be a boost in clients that you're going to put an ad out there and people are immediately going to flock to your business and schedule all these consultations. Um, That's not really how we suggest you use ads. Ads are typically good for if you have an event or if you have a Facebook group or if you have a deliverable, it's sort of the handshake where you introduce yourself and they go, Oh, okay. uh, You're now on my radar. Um, But once you're on their radar, you want to make sure that you have a way to continue to build that relationship. So that's kind of a general saying when it comes to ads. But um, first, before we kind of get into the ads, I think it's important for you to know social media platforms accountants should be on. That is episode 13. That is, we did a podcast and a blog post on that. But what that goes into is the demographics of each platform. So if you're wondering, should I be on Facebook? Should I be on Google? Um, You know, should I be on Instagram, LinkedIn, whatever? All of those platforms, they have a certain demographic and audience that they attract. And that's the most important thing when deciding what sort of platform you should be paying for ads on. So we are going to run through a couple different options. Uh, The first one is Facebook ads. We'll go into LinkedIn ads and then Google display and search ads. So Facebook ads, uh, I don't know about you, Eric, but it feels like every time I'm asked about ads, it is about Facebook ads. That's usually where the conversation starts. 
Yeah. And you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Facebook is definitely one of the more popular places to push ads. Um, you know, we're going to get into Google, and, and, but it's just different, right? People yeah. hang out in Facebook. It's sort of like, it's like the water cooler of the internet, right? <laughs> it's not necessarily like where you're going to go for a Friday night party, but you're just sort of always there during the yeah. day. Like you spend, people spend long periods of time there. And so that's a great place to start. Um, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of people who give advice in the, the ad world will say, just pick one platform. Um, and push ads on it and get good at it. You know, it's better to gauge, you know, how well your ads are doing. If you can put a little bit more time and attention into one platform, than spreading your resources mm-hmm. thin across a whole bunch of them. Um, so if you're one of those people who sort of maybe has a smaller budget or maybe doesn't want to spend much at all on ads, then pick Facebook, stick to that as one ad platform, put the budget you have into it. And, and you know, sometimes you just have to figure out what your audience wants to see too. Sometimes you got to push a few different types of ads and go like, okay, the reason why I didn't get any engagement isn't because Facebook ads doesn't work. It's because they, this ad just isn't speaking, you know, to yeah. my customer. Um, yeah. And I, I mean, I think that's why Facebook ads is kind of so it's, it's a, it's a pro and a con at the same time. Cause they give you a ton of options to run your ads. You can do a carousel, you can do a photo, you can do a video, you can do a downloadable um, or, you know, an opt-in, a deliverable. There are so many ways to kind of run a Facebook ad that I think it kind of also can leave room for error if you don't know what you're doing and you're just clicking buttons. Um, But having said that, it's also not super difficult to navigate if you just spend some time to learn about, okay, this is what a carousel is. This is where you put the link. Um, this is how you kind of create a targeted audience. So it, it's, there's definitely a pro there and that you have a lot of variety as far as how you want your ad to work. Yeah. You know, and, and something that I, I like to tell people is, you know, if you're going to do something like this and you're actually going to pay, so paid mm-hmm. advertising, right? If you're actually going to put money into this and hope that it works for you, make sure you have somewhere for your prospective customer to go. Like mm-hmm. it's, it's great getting really good at Facebook ads, but if they land on your website and they're totally lost and confused, and then they just bounce off your website, then it doesn't matter how much or how good or effective your ads are because you just, you can't capture those leads anyways. So I always, you know, like to start with what's the goal, what's your end goal? Why are you running the ad? Because if you're running the ad to get a new client, okay, so then let's work our way backwards. How do we get new clients? How do you get a client? Well, I get a client by them filling out my contact form on my website. All right, how do they get to your contact form on your website? Is there a path for this person to actually get there? Or do they have to somehow like mysteriously know in the back of their head, like this is what my uh, uh, prospective service provider wants me to do in order to get in contact with them. So our goal is to make it easy for them to sort of flow through this funnel. So they see the ad, it draws their interest, they're intrigued, they click on it, it goes to a landing page or your homepage on your website. It says just enough information to answer kind of why they're there. And then it directs them to whatever that medium is that you want to take that next step. So if it directs them to your contact page, make sure there's a button there or some form of direction that says contact us now, you know, schedule an appointment today or something like that so that you don't waste your money on a paid advertisement and lose out on these opportunities. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what we'll do with our, some of our clients actually is if they have a webinar or something they're trying to promote. We will, in Lucidchart, which is a really great website if you guys are working through a process, in Lucidchart, we'll draw out the entire process. Okay, we want to attract them with an ad. We want to lead them towards this deliverable. And then from this deliverable, we'll add them to our email campaign. And then we'll send we'll send them our full sales pitch. Or, you know, that's a condensed version. Um, but that's a really great option if you're, if you're looking to create a process. But for Facebook ads, how it works as far as paying for the ads. You don't pay per click. And if you're unfamiliar with that term, pay per click is essentially if you have an ad, the platform, Google, Facebook would only charge you uh, if you actually, if someone actually clicks on that ad. That's not how Facebook works. Facebook works where they show the ad and however long the ad runs or whoever sees it, you are just getting charged for that period of time. Um, it doesn't matter if anyone clicks on it. If no one clicks on the ad, they're still going to charge you. Um, so that can be a little bit of a con just because if your, your ad didn't really resonate with people, uh, 
Facebook is still going to charge you. Um, and that differs a little bit to the other ads that we'll talk about um, coming up. But when it comes to your ad, so you, you know how to pay, uh, you understand that there's a whole bunch of different ways you can kind of display your ad with carousels, videos, whatever. When it comes to targeting, um, I have found that their targeting is pretty advanced um, compared to some other platforms like compared to Google. Um, however, it's not as advanced, I found, as LinkedIn. Um, so it's kind of in a sweet spot and you have a few different options as far as how you want to target your audiences. You can do it with core audiences, which is personalizing the criteria. So you can say, I want it to be, I want to target men between 40 to 50 that have an interest in golf because I'm doing golfing or golf accounting. Um, you know, I do it for golf courses. So if that, that's what you want to do, you can create a really great targeted core audience for people in that market. You can also do custom audiences. So if you have a page, you can say, I want to advertise only to people that have liked my page, which can be a really kind of awesome way to get those leads that, you know, if you have a lot of likes, you know, that there are a lot of people in your target audience. It's a lot of, uh, it's a great way to draw them back to your website. You can also do look alike audiences, which is people if they have similar interests to those of your best customers. So if you have, um, let's say for example, I, you know, women entrepreneurs is kind of a popular audience to have. Um, and let's say, you know, that a lot of these women entrepreneurs like a lot of other women entrepreneur influencers. So Jenna Kutcher, Rachel Hollis, you say, okay, I want to attract those sort of audiences. Here's, you know, what I'm going to input. It'll make sure that people that like those sort of uh, influencers will see your ad. So you have three different options, Quora audiences, custom audiences, and lookalike audiences. Um, what, at, which one we recommend is really kind of dependent on what sort of setup you have with your business. You know, what have you done with your Facebook page? Do you really know your audience or, um, are you kind of, you know, your audience is very general. Um, that kind of is going to determine which sort of tor target audience we, uh, suggest. Yeah. And, and, you know, to the next step in this is a little bit of your more advanced step. Uh, mm -hmm. you, I mean, you can, but it's, it's something you don't really want to run a Facebook ad unless you have, uh, like I said, that follow up plan of pushing them somewhere so you can actually close that deal. And part of that technical process is, is taking that, what they call the Facebook pixel. It's essentially a piece of code that you copy and you paste within your, wherever they're landing. And so this is the part where it's kind of like having that conversation with your business client. And it's like trying to explain to them how to do a journal entry. And so sometimes yeah. you have to sort of balance, like how much do I actually want to do and how much do I want to maybe hire a developer or, or a marketing company or someone who knows how to do this just so that it gets done right. Even if it's just that one time to get that Facebook pixel installed properly, but it is that level of like, you know, how many times does do business owners go out there and try to do their own journal entries and classifications yeah. and their books? And then they bring them to you and you're like, why? <laughs> right? yeah. So, and yeah. I'm not saying that, that this is maybe that complicated, but, uh, I mean, the good thing is Facebook is, has plenty of resources and they'll, sh they'll guide you step by step by step of how to do this. And so a lot of times if you're on a popular platform like Squarespace, even Squarespace will have their own documents that shows this is how you do it in Squarespace. And so as long as you can get those support documents up and if you are on Squarespace and you, know, you have Facebook and you have the pics, you can get both those documents up and it should be pretty easy to follow along and go like, okay, step one, copy the code from here. Step two, open this page on my Squarespace account. Step three, paste it in the specific box. Just follow the steps. No need to get creative with it. Um, yeah. And this is how you're going to be able to track because that's also important. You want to know if your money that you're spending is actually giving you a return on your investment. Yeah. So you want to be able well, to go. I'll, go ahead. Also, ex explain what what Facebook Facebook Pixel is if if people aren't familiar with what it what it does for ads. Yeah, it's essentially telling you what what happened. So you'll be able to see uh, the analytics of how your ads are doing, and this is how it tracks it. Because it's not, uh, you know, sometimes the internet can seem mysterious, like. Oh, how did they know this information about me? Well, in reality, how they know this information about you, um, you can find it up in your browser link. If you, many times, if you had been clicking on like a Facebook link that led you off site, you can actually click on your browser link and you'll see, you know, domain name.com slash 
question mark, and then like this long string of stuff, right? That's all this like uh, pre-planned tracking information that helps the people, the marketing companies or the people who are looking at analytics um, see what's really happening. So one of your questions might be, you know, I've heard of Google Analytics, but how does Google know that, you know, this person came from an iPhone and they came from Facebook and then they clicked on a link and they landed on my web page, like a blog on my website. That's mm -hmm. how they know. It's because inherently in a lot of these platforms, they have these tracking pixels and they have these parameters that they put behind the URLs so they can actually gather this data. Right. Um, so if you can kind of get nerdy into that, you can see that the internet starts to become a little bit more black and white. And this is part of that, where you take this piece of code, this Facebook pixel, you put it on your page that the people are going to, and now within your ana the analytics and the, the reporting, you can actually see, okay, now they're talking. Now Facebook and my website are talking together. And I can see like, okay, I paid $100 for this specific ad, and these people landed on this landing page, but nobody contacted me. Like nobody became even a lead. Um, yeah. And then you can see I paid $200 for this ad, and they went to this page and 50 people out of 100 people contacted me. And now you have that information to make a more intelligent decision on this is the type, like, right, I, 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 this, the first one was a picture in the ad and the second one was a video. More mm -hmm. of my customers like the video ad. So now you know, okay, now I'm a little bit more smart on this. I can put the $300 into the video ad and yeah. then you can go from there. So that, that's what the pixel does. It really helps you get a little bit more granular on the analytics and understanding your return on investment for, you know, the ads you're running. Because the last thing you want to do is just throw money on ads and then not know what they're doing or how they're doing, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so F Facebook Pixel is great. Another really kind of a cool feature if you are planning on using Facebook ads. Uh, another option is LinkedIn ads. So if you checked out our episode 13, you know that LinkedIn is really great for business professionals. If you are looking to have, um, maybe your prices are a little bit higher, you're looking to kind of target a more established sort of business, LinkedIn is a great place to go. Typically their median income is higher. Um, they're usually a lot more into the professional service types industries. Um, so that's, that's kind of what LinkedIn generally speaking is great for. And they are also similar to Facebook, um, in how they target. So you can specifically say, I want my ad to be shown to people in, we can keep with the same example in the golfing industry. And I want, you know, you can do the same thing, gender, age, um, those sort of general analytics. But what I really like about LinkedIn ads is that you can get even more specific in regards to their work. So in LinkedIn, everyone has where they work, their prior work history, they have their job title, and you can also target those people. So if you want to target CEOs or small business owners or, you know, admin assistants, whoever you feel like your portfolio or I'm sorry, your um, personas resonate with, put that data into the LinkedIn targeting ads and it'll make sure your, your, um, your ad is shown to those people. So for example, if you're doing taxes for individuals, we don't suggest LinkedIn necessarily. Um, again, you're going to hit a really kind of general professional market. Facebook would be a kind of better option for that. But if you're doing bookkeeping services for service-based businesses, it can be a really great option. Um, how they work with pricing is a little bit similar to Facebook. You know, if, if the ad is shown, um, they're going to charge you. And it's also very great uh, with their sort of different sort of features for as far as post ads and video ads. Um, they do take it a step further from Facebook in that they allow for message ads, which is probably why some of us don't like LinkedIn as much. Um, I'm sure we've all gotten those sales pitches, those cold email messages. Um, you know, saying, Hey, I have the new greatest, uh, what is it app or something? And, you know, they're asking if you have 10 minutes to schedule a meeting. Um, that's because they're using the message ads. Uh, another kind of tool they have is LinkedIn sales navigator, which is sort of manual ads. You can really search for who you want to target. You can be very interactive and okay. I want to talk to this person. I like the business they work with. Um, it's kind of a more advanced combination of a search and an ads feature. Um, and these all these ads, you know, whether you're using message ads or post ads, they can be used appropriately and very effectively. 
Um, however, if you're seeing people kind of cold message you and you're turned off by it, don't necessarily, um, you know, throw it all, throw it all to the side. Um, as I'm sure kind of, you've heard <laughs> as you smiling, you're like, oh gosh. Yeah. Yeah. You know, LinkedIn, my, I guess my, my advice would be for this is if you don't have a LinkedIn account, get one, right? It's, yeah. it's, I know there's a lot of people out there. There's a lot, it's not just accountants, it's all industries and there's, just there's still a big segment of the business just world that of people who just aren't on LinkedIn. And so my first thing is if you don't have a LinkedIn account, go make one. It's, it's free. It's just like any other social platform. It's essentially like your new business card. It's your LinkedIn has become like the digital business card of today, or it's in other, depending on who you are, it's also like the digital resume. And so if you're hiring or if you are sometimes if you've, you know, been applying for jobs, you'll see now there's always typically a, a field of put in your LinkedIn uh, URL. And so this is a, it just from, uh, if you think about it, just without even the ads perspective, you should be on LinkedIn. Um, you should be on LinkedIn. You should put your background, who you are. It, it helps develop your credibility with the customers that you might pull from LinkedIn anyways. Um, and then create a business on LinkedIn, have a business page on there. So just it's part of your organic SEO. It's part of getting your business on the internet. It's part of getting you on the internet and being found virtually. Um, and it's also a great way to showcase who you are. It's a free, it's essentially, it's a free website. It's a free landing page. So get on there, put your information out there. Um, be able to, I mean, you can't even use these tools and connect with the audiences on LinkedIn unless you have that account. Uh, yeah. And then going from there, you know, you can get as tactical and as granular as you want. LinkedIn's pretty cool because it's like you're essentially paying for access to someone's inbox, um, if that's yeah. a way to say it, right? It's like this, I am paying to be able to text message you almost. Yeah. Except it's very targeted, which is what makes it cool. Um, so I've I've known people who have used it, um, like Sales Navigator, like you said too, schedule 10 minutes with me. And on your end, that might feel like, oh, I hate it, right? But to the person sending that, that's kind of like their goal is like, I'm going to send this message to a hundred people in hopes that maybe even one to 10 of them schedule that call. And mm -hmm. what happens is when you get it and you don't like it and you're like, Oh, I don't, I don't like people doing this to me. You're just not their target market. And that's okay. And then you may not understand it on the receiving end. Cause it just, it could be kind of annoying, but from the person's perspective of using it, of using that tool, 10 calls could mo and, and whatever can schedule from those calls and become cu customers can actually just, it pays for LinkedIn. It pays for that ability to use that service. So it's definitely a tool that, that, um, if used right, it could be very effective. Yeah. And something we do, uh, want to let you know is if you have a LinkedIn profile, you can actually get LinkedIn sales navigator free for 30 days. Um, so we found that was kind of a really cool way when we were first starting to learn, uh, learn about the tool, uh, if you want to get used to it a little bit. So there's LinkedIn ads. The next sort of ad group we are going to go into is Google. And they have two primarily different ways that they do ads. Um, it's a really kind of popular way to advertise, but you have two, two options. So the first option is Google search campaigns. And how that works is, you know, go to Google, type in any service or, or type in anything really. You know, you can type in, um, I don't know phone chargers. And the first two, three results will be advertisements for phone chargers. Um, and those are people that pay for an advertisement to have their search results show up first when people type in phone chargers. And you can do the same thing. So for example, you offer bookkeeping ser services in um, Houston, Texas. You know, if people type in bookkeeping services in Houston, Texas, one of the number one or two ads will be your website. Um, so it's a really kind of great way to get in front of people right when they are searching for your type of service. Um, there is, it can be a little tricky if you're trying to play around with the keywords, you want to make sure that you are actually typing, um, or putting in keywords that people would actually type. Um, but that's, that's kind of one way to do it. Now, as far as kind of pros and cons, it is going to be more broad than Facebook. Um, you can't necessarily type in, okay, I only want to you know, women or men or this age group or have this title, um, you can target audience your, your, your uh, ad based on location. Um, but Google doesn't necessarily allow all of those sort of advanced um, 
target audiences for, for their basic um, kind of Google search campaigns. You pay per click. So that means if you have your ad running for a month and only three people click on it, you will only be charged for those three people. Um, the amounts usually vary, but you, it's not like going to be $20 per click. Um, it's usually, I would say probably, what would you say, Eric, probably under $5 per click. On yeah. Average. And it depends on the keywords you're using. Like Google's not stupid. So they'll, you know, they'll, they'll jack up the price if it's a more popular keyword. So, uh, what do I mean by popular keyword? If you and every other, let's say your, uh, uh bookkeeping firm is, would you say Houston? Uh, if yeah. your bookkeeping company is in Houston and let's say there's a hundred bookkeeping companies in Houston and let's say every single bookkeeping company, those hundred are paying for a specific Google term, which is like bookkeepers in Houston, yeah. <laughs> then they're going to jack that price up because there's a hundred people who are trying to use like every bookkeeper in Houston is trying to use that. Mm -hmm. And so they're, they know that there's a high demand for it. So they're going to jack the price up. So that'll be a more expensive term. So the, the Google AdWords is this can be a very like um, strategic game and it can be a little bit more difficult to approach than like Facebook or LinkedIn ads. Cause you really have to strategically go, what are these high, uh, high, um, highly uh, wanted words that other people are paying a lot of money for. And then what are the, like, what's the low end of words that mm -hmm. are super cheap, but yet nobody's searching. And then you got to try to find that sweet spot. Like what's in the middle, where's that word that like a lot of people are searching that I can, you know, I can use and pay for, but it's not so high that like everyone and their mother, you know, every yeah. bookkeeper in the country is using this ad word and, and Google's jacking up the price. Yeah. QuickBooks so it, it, pro advisor is probably not going to be very cheap. Yeah. I mean, if you're doing a word, if you're trying to do a keyword that like where you're now competing with Intuit and QuickBooks and zero, you're probably going to lose. Like, I, you know, depending on your budget for AdWords, these types of companies, like Intuit last like in 2019, Intuit generated like $17 billion in revenue, something like that. I, I can't remember the exact number. So I yeah. have a feeling that their budget for AdWords is going to be a lot more than most bookkeeping firms. So just kind of think about that. Like who are, who's also your competition? Cause if you're competing with somebody that can throw $10 million into Google AdWords, then that may not be a word that you want to try to go after. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. No, makes total sense. So that that's one option, Google search campaigns. The other option is Google display ads. And this will be when you're on a website and you see kind of the display ads in, in the sidebar or in the header. Um, you, you need to incorporate an image or a video of some sort. Um, I, you know, these can be good if you really, you know, your target audience, you know, there's a particular website they frequently visit, um, or, or you have a really good understanding of your personas. Um, however, it could be, I think a little bit more challenging, um, when it comes to, when it comes to bookkeeping and doing those types of ads. So. That is all the time we have for today. We are going to wrap up with our three to do's. Number one, create an advertising budget. You're going to have trouble moving forward, understanding what platform you want to advertise on. If you don't know how much you can spend. Number two, check out the demographics from episode 13. And then number three, try a new type of ads for one month. So that is all the time we have for today. We'll see you next time. See ya. Thanks for listening to today's episode. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to our podcast. If you're getting value from us, please leave a review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you are listening from. Also, feel free to share with your friends and follow us at facebook.com slash ProAdvisorMarketingUS. Now get out there and build your story, tell your story, and sell your story. See you next week.